good day everyone, it is your art teacher Shanika Grimes. Today we will be looking at shapes and lines again and we will be looking at using lines to draw shapes in observational drawing. So we're going to be looking for the shapes that we see in regular everyday fruits and vegetables and objects. What shape do you see? <laughs> okay, let's discuss further. Here's what you will need. You'll need some pencil crayons, pencils, sharpeners, and erasers. You'll need also a sketch pad, an egg from the fridge if you have one. You don't need the vegetables featured in the video, and a spotlight or a phone light. All right, so with that, let's get started. What shape do you see here? What shape do you see now? I think the sweet pepper was kind of a square shape. This tomato was an oval as well as this lemon. This apple is kind of in between a circle and an oval. The potato is definitely an oval and the front of the cut cucumber looks like a circle. The egg, a definite oval. This box in two dimensional shapes is a rectangle and the kids have started drawing with their cucumber. Let me explain. Here's a cucumber close up. <laughs> All right, what shape do you see? I feel like it's mainly a circle. It's not a perfect circle, but to start, we can definitely use a circle. So you can pause the video now and draw your circle and the immediate things that you see here. I kind of see a rounded triangle now that we've started back. And then you can see the individual shape of the seeds. They're kind of little teardrop shapes. We're trying to draw in two dimensions as much as possible, which means the flat shape that you see. All right. We're going to amend to that shape here now. I've begun with my circle. I'm going to start drawing that inner shape that's housing the seeds, it looks kind of triangular to me, like a softed, soft edged triangle and those little teardrop shaped seeds. There was a little stem going through the center, like a few little lines that kind of look like a boomerang. <laughs> you must draw always what you see. Several different people drawing the same drawing may pay attention to different details. It should still look like a half of a cucumber in the end. But everybody's drawing style is a bit different. You can pay attention to how the seeds change direction as well. Don't just make a pattern of what you think you see. You have to be looking very closely. Draw one thing at a time to ensure that you're not just making a pattern. Observational drawing is very difficult. I'm mending to my circle now because I noticed that the cucumber is not quite a perfect circle. The edges are a little bit disrupted. So you can always start as a base with the main shape you see. But as you go further into your drawing, you need to amend to the shape, make corrections for the subtle differences that you see. At this stage of drawing, you don't want to be pressing too hard. I'm pressing a little harder than I would usually press so that you guys can see in the recording. When you're sketching, you press as lightly as possible to generally mark the area. So you see now here that I'm erasing, it's easier to erase when you draw lightly. So you need to be in the habit of pressing very lightly on your drawing. So I am just fixing the edge to the amended shape that I see, which is not quite a perfect circle. You can go back at any point, scroll back a little bit and pause on the cucumber. Or if you had a half a cucumber in your fringe, you can draw what you see in front of you. Observational drawing is the art of looking at something physical in your space 
usually not quite a photograph, but photographs are allowed for portraits and you're drawing from what you see. It takes a lot of practice to get it quite right and here I'm just trying to get in the basic idea and understand. We're back to zooming in on the cucumber in a little bit and I want you to pay attention to some details that you will see. You see this little inner edge of light green? We're going to draw a marker in pencil with a wiggly line to show this area. Right? So you want to really get close on the thing that you're drawing to make sure that you get in as much details as possible. Alright, so I'm going to go over here back to my drawing and I'm going to draw in that little green marker. If at any point you need to see the cucumber again, you can just scroll back a little bit and pause. You should be able to see the cucumber quite big on the screen when I hold it up to the camera. I'm just explaining those details to my little helpers here. It was making the seeds a bit patterned, so I just needed to explain a bit more and then Giovanni's drawing got a bit dark, so he had to start over. If you find that your drawing is very heavy, you might need to start over your base drawing. You don't want a really, really dark drawing. Medium to very light is preferred when you're sketching. So I'm thinking that we're going to do that wiggly inner line here now. I'm bringing it a little closer so you guys can see. You see I have that faint inner line that dictates where that light green color in the rim of the cucumber you can also strengthen the lines where our triangle if you can see the two-dimensional triangular shape ends so we're going to pay attention to the weight of the line how hard you press and we're moving on to the egg now I want you to take a close look at this egg. I'm sure that you'll notice the oval shape. And we're going to begin drawing the egg. Let's draw that oval shape as tidy as we can and as right, neat light as we closer. can. Right, that's the light right there. And over here you can see a shadow. Okay. So I'm going to draw some lines where you see the light on the egg. Now over here will be a bit darker. That's where the shadow is. See it? Press pause. Now draw your light on your egg and your shadow. Look, I can even see some shadows down here. Ooh, that's really good. Ooh. Ooh. All right, so press pause where you light the egg and draw a circle around the light. There's a sh and then a shadow starts right here. So oval, little circle for where the brightest light is. And then the shadow starts about here. I hope you guys can see it. Press pause. <laughs> okay, so now we are going to begin drawing those shadows on the egg. You should have them in already, but I'm going to go through demonstrating the light using your cell phone light or your flashlight. You can have someone point it at the egg or you can set up the egg on the table so that you can see the light. It can be very difficult for some persons to see subtle light, but if you can see direct light coming from the flashlight, eventually your eyes will become more sensitive towards seeing more medium subtle light. So we want to practice seeing shadows, the difference between shadows and light using the flashlight on the object if you have a physical object if not you can reference the clip that i just showed you just scroll back a little bit press pause and you can see that when i add the flashlight it's easier to see the separation of the different types of shading or the values which is the degree to which the object is lit all right, I think everybody had a good viewing. So with that, we are going to 
take a look at another feature of our drawing I'm just moving some of this excess off the table we've been through circles and ovals which are two-dimensional shapes and if you look at the object in two dimensions you can begin to see the shading in more three dimensions so I'm adding the highlight where I saw the brightest spot of light and a distinct curve for the shadow and with that we're gonna begin the sweet pepper which almost looks like a square from straight on yes can you see the square very good it's not a perfect square but you can always start your drawings with the basic shape you see especially in two dimensions then you can add the little lumps and bumps and shading that will make it jump up from your page. So you can press pause anywhere here and draw in your Sweet Pepper's basic shape. I'm going to go do that now. So I saw the little kind of a triangular shape at the top. Then I'm drawing like the, the Sweet Pepper kind of looks like a tooth almost now that I'm drawing it here from a distance see that little triangle for the stem that's in the top and I'm gonna outline all of my spots of light you don't do this in the future when you understand fully but as a beginner to help you see the light we want to mark it up so that it is distinct and clear to you that this is where the light falls and we're also gonna mark out the shadows yeah the sweet peppers are real good guys they're so pretty y'all Ooh, so we just want it straight on and this is a what guys? No, a what <laughs> Very good, thank you Shanika. Y'all have me worried. The other two y'all agree as a rectangle? Yeah. Okay, so you guys, sorry, over there now. Press, right, wait. All right, press pause. Right here. Draw your rectangle, don't worry about the words too much. But you can draw some of the words. And this little colored thing over here. And see, what about the black spot on, the, on this part? One second, sweetie. Okay, so I am focused on drawing that rectangle to the size, or a little bit smaller than the size I see. And that looks pretty good. So make sure you have your rectangle, and then let's go. What shape do we see here guys? There's a crescent, yeah. which is a kind of a moon shape. And then it has like a line across the middle. So I want you guys at home to pause the video here so that you can see this nice still image. It looks very dirty. Yeah. It looks old and crusty. Mm -hmm. But when they fry, they such a nightmare, you're gonna lick your shops. Like the inside, see it's not too soft, so Shani can get a piece, you can stand home. <laughs> pause. Pause. Now draw. Okay, so I'm just beginning that crescent shape and I wanna make sure that I have a nice tidy outline on my crescent. I'm gonna add in some of the details of the lines I see um, in the center separating my crescent and that as well. We're focusing on the lines and the basic shading that we see in color. We're not getting into full detail, but we're getting as close as possible to what we see. I added a few spots to my crescent um, in terms of the dark spots I saw because it's a bit bruised, the banana. So I'm just giving you a closer view of what I have drawn in terms of my highlights and my shadows. I added the words to the box, but only the biggest shapes and words. We're not getting into too much detail. We just want to understand the basic shapes that we can start with and the separation of the details with the lines to help us visualize those tones and shadows. So this is Shanika's attempt. She is seven years old, soon to be eight years old, and this is pretty good. She's pretty good at art for her age. And then we're going to look at Sotora's good shaping on everything. The seeds got a little bit patterny, but don't worry about that. We are learning. Giovanni is missing a shape because he kind of gets obsessive about his drawings. But as you can see, his shaping is quite good and quite advanced for his age as well. 
so I included some children so you can see what my levies can be expected to do so don't feel discouraged whatever stage you're at each journey begins with a single step and you're taking that step with me we're gonna make the lines <laughs> with marker more distinct using this sharpie marker if you have one if you don't have one you can use an inky pen you don't do this in um, observational drawing um, quite often but so we cement our idea of shaping at this beginner stage we're focusing on the shapes so we are going to make those shapes more distinct and visible so we're going to do that using the markers so that when we're coloring none of the important shapes we learned about while sketching get lost I'm re referencing the cucumber again to make sure that I can add in anything I didn't see before. So if you need to scroll back a couple beats to see your cucumber again, you can do that. This drawing tool, learning about outlines and the importance of lines will help us to see the lines and the separation of lines better in the future. So we're making sure to make everything distinct so that our eyes that are gentle right now, they're not as sensitive as they will be in a few years, that it's easier for us to see these separations as we mark them out. Your eye becomes trained to see softer things the more often you draw. This will make you a little bit better either way. right and we're gonna outline everything so that when we color nothing is lost we can see that was where my light was this is where my shadow fell this is my distinct oval shape this is my distinct crescent shape so that has a few bumps and lumps in the corners you can see those bumps and lumps more carefully when they're outlined so we made them a little bit more abstract so that we can see the details and the changes distinctly. The drawing style will get a little bit more subtle over time, but this is a great beginner trick to see your lines, see your details. And I draw in whatever is black to me using the marker. The banana, sorry, the plantain had lots of spots. I didn't try to draw in every single one. That can take quite a long time. And when you're focused on one object, you can do that. But while we're just examining mostly the shapes that we can see, there are some three-dimensional shapes present. Like this box could have been a cuboid as well, but that's not what we're studying today. We're focusing on what we can see when we look at it straight on and it's relatively flattened. So I drew in my words as well and now you can distinctly see the little triangle shape in the top of my sweet pepper. And I had some shading that I saw as well on that little green part. Even now in the video you can see light green and dark green. So you want to draw separation lines between the colors that you can see. All of my shading I separate with these lines. So I can distinctly see where the light colors go and where the dark colors go. We're going to get a little bit more sensitive with the drawing as we go on. But like I said, this is a really great beginner trick to help you see the light. And when I'm doing this in a more subtle drawing that's more detailed, I do draw in these outlines, but you can barely see them. They're very soft. And then I erase them as I begin shading. Those are some highlights I saw. And here is the most distinct shadow I saw. It wasn't perfectly straight, but you can draw yours. Some of the kids drew theirs perfectly straight. Another highlight that I noticed and some more shadows.
every time you draw something, it may look a bit different. So I'm going to write in the word sensodyne. I had it in pencil. You can do this too. This is the type of toothpaste that I use because <laughs> I have sensitive teeth. It really works, by the way. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to write that in. We're taking our time. This can be done slower and more perfectly. But here we are just studying our lines and shapes as an introduction. So you don't need to be super detailed. Okay. And then I'm going to mark a few more things that I would have seen in terms of lines. Then we are going to label each object. I wrote the name of the object, it's a cucumber, and then I put a little dash and I wrote the main shape that I saw which was a circle if you were drawing the cucumber from a side you would more see an oval so just bear that in mind you never change the angle of a drawing once you're drawing it because it will change the shape try to leave the bottle the exact place or the fruit that you started if you have to move it put it right back where you started from so the egg was an oval. There's a little bit of re some cues that can help you to revise when you're doing your drawing later on. Okay, and the sweet pepper, it was mostly a square for me. <laughs> It was a nice square and then it, I added in the details. So you start difficult objects, especially with the main two-dimensional and in the future three-dimensional shape that you see. Right? I'm going on about something, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> so a sweet pepper and for this I saw a square. Maybe if you're doing your sofa at home from the front, you might see a rectangle. The top of your fan might be a circle. So you wanna pay attention in your everyday life to the shapes you see. This will help you begin any drawing. If you're looking at a snack wrapper straight on, most often you might see a square or a rectangle to begin. So I'm wrapping my words around the shape so it looks nice and tidy. So it's following the edge of the shape. This rectangular box was my, I'll just write box and then I'll write rectangle because that's what we see in two dimensions. We see a distinct rectangle here and then Shanika came up with this shape right away. And it was called a crescent. So that is another two dimensional shape. All right, so the plantain is a crescent. Okay, so let's have a closer look at these lines. There weren't many on the box, there wasn't much distinct shading on the box. All right. Now let's take a little break. Or you can continue finishing your drawings, but we'll just show you this little Lego play break for fun. But there's no there's no But you one. can't snatch it because she had it first. Just because you want it, well, you guys are having a conversation at the gas station. So I went to the mill today and I was working very hard. Mm -hmm. And then 
my car broke down, so I walked over here to see if it ran out of gas. What do you think, Mr. Um, White Hat? Um, I think you should get some um water and put in your car. You think it's water that it needs? Or or some gas. And then you put water in your car? Oh yes. You put water here for the radiator. Yeah. Because I thought you meant water gas. No. That's not good. Because Sounds like an explosion. Yeah. And okay. he has a different face. And Bring around the car, Shatora. Jill. Bring the car around the gas pump there. F. F. Oh. oh. Cousin Larry brought the car. How is the car now, Cousin Larry? You think it wants a gas? <laughs> Wait, what, Cousin Larry? Cousin Larry? He looks evil to be cousins. He's evil? No, he's a superhero. Mm. Cousin Larry is bringing the gas. He's hot, look. Ha, ha, ha. Show me the superhero. Look. Bring it closer. Here. He's cute. He's a superhero. He's a supervillain. He's a supervillain. Super super yes, he is a superhero. Uh, Jill, there's something supposed to be here for the tire. Yes, I know. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, that is cool. Look, Auntie, look, I'm here. Do it again. Look, Auntie. Ooh. You spin them, I use the clash. Now I want that one together. And boyfriends are mm. off. That's how you make me fight. Let's this see. is. Clash that one, Satoru. This is fighters. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Don't say that. I'm about to make a transformer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Oh, no, again, again, can that be? I need the temperature. Store it any day now. Okay, so we're here now. We're gonna look at coloring. We're not doing too much shading, but we're doing the most distinct areas of shading. Shading can get very complex and very detailed, and there are things like sub shadows, which are shadows within shadows, and medium to bright highlights mid-tones and there's separations even in mid-tones of higher values and lower values we're just trying to pinpoint the most distinct areas of shading on our cucumber so we're going to do the little rim of green that is on the inside of the triangular shape you can go back to the clip with the cucumber if you need to see this and pause and look for now the color So we're just going to roughly put in where we see the changes in color. The inside of the cucumber is mostly off-white. So we're just looking for where it changes to green. And we're using not really the top of the pencil, but more the side of the pencil to get some smooth shading. That little rim we drew in just before the edge was also a bit of a lighter green. So we're going to put start with the lighter green putting in all the, the lightest green that we see and then we'll go to the darker green. So when you're coloring an object, it will usually have more than one shade of a similar color. It might even be monochromatic. So when we get to the sweet pepper, it's going to be a ranges between a deep orangey red and a lighter orange, you know, to create those shadows. Here we have varying greens accent accenting the cucumber. So you're just going to do it the way that you see it. Some persons might not have as sensitive an eye, so they might see more flat colors and begin to fill in areas flat as is customary for someone's eye who is not trained. But 
once you have some separation and some distinction between the colors you are well on your way because persons who aren't accustomed to drawing don't see any separation of color so now i'm adding the little strips of dark green you see it's a bit spaced out how i see it on the cucumber so you can see there's patches of dark green around the edge and then a space with light green so i noticed that i'm not trying to notice every single thing but i'm just going to give you some cues here into what i'm seeing let me sharpen the video for you all right so i'm looking from straight on i can even see light green dark green patch and then some little lines of specks of light green and you can see the green is heaviest around the little seeds inside the seeds is a bit tan but i didn't pay that too much attention i'm just focusing on the most obvious colors because this is a beginner exercise all right This is looking really good. I'm really proud of you guys. I'm really proud of my help here that's coming along. My little helpers are doing a great job and they concentrated all the way through. So I was particularly proud of their ability to sit still and complete this exercise. I'm just going for white in terms of smoothing the rest of the cucumber. I didn't really have an off white in my crayons and we're just doing a basic exercise. So we don't need to get too deep we're just doing the most obvious things. So I'm just going to put back in some white um, to give that cucumber a more finished feeling. And in a crayon drawing, you really don't want to leave the even the whites the color of the paper so much. If it's pencil, yes, but not so much for crayon. It will look more finished if you even color the white. I got a little bit of a creamish color for the area around the seeds and I just put some hints of that cream color. Alright, so that is my sketch of a cucumber and we do see some variations to the color especially around the rim and around the triangle area. So we're not going to go too deep into that because it's a seeing exercise to get us all warmed up for more in-depth drawings and paintings. And we're going to move on to the egg. This should be fairly easy to see. So I'm going to go and get a tan color. And I'm going to start with any area that's not white is going to be the general color of the egg, which is a kind of a tan color. The kids are fishing out their tan colors. I'm giving them some assistance in terms of looking for their tan colors. All right. So now everybody is coloring. You can see the varying finishes and I'm gonna give them all a tan color <laughs> They're very excited to get going. Alright, so I have my colors separated with little rubber bands. That keeps everything easy to find. So when I'm finished, I just put them back. So if you're looking for a brownish or tannish color, they would all be in the same rubber band. Alright, and with that, I'm going to start coloring everything that's not white with the main color of the egg. I'm going to also put a little bit of it in my shadow, but that line is going to keep my a distinct barrier on where I saw my shadow. So I don't have to worry too much about losing my shadow. It also gives me a distinct area that I'm not coloring. So that's my sheen. It would be more subtle on a more advanced drawing, but so we can improve on our seeing, we're just going to leave it with that sharp outline so we know that is definitely the light. Just before my shadow, I'm starting to press a little harder on the crayon so it gradually goes extremely dark in my shadow. I'm even going to go back on top of my shadow, just the shadow area now, with a little bit darker brown to show that transition as well. So 
so you can see the shadow most distinctly. Most often I will avoid using black. Black can be a very harsh color and it can ruin a good drawing. So you want to rely on dark purples, dark blues, darker browns before you get to extreme black. So in as much as possible, avoid black till the end. Right? So you can see my that color next to white is me pressing soft on the crayon then the color next to the darkest brown is me pressing a little harder and then I switch colors to get my extreme shadow and you can see how that brings the egg up from the page just a little bit so that's all we need for this exercise we're not getting into the drawing super deep we just want to see our shadows I kind of make the black line it was bothering me a little more subtle with my white crayon and I color in my highlight. Alright, so I'm going to continue doing all of my um, sh fruits in shades of the color that I can see the best. I smoothed over the lighter area of my tan with the white as well. You can use white for some blending also. And that helps smooth over everything and make it come together nicely. It's looking great. Alright, so you can see a highlight, two variations in the medium tone, which is that tan color. And then my shadow is a more distinct brown. Right, so the more you stare at the egg, the more you might see the different shadows, etc. But we're not going to get too deep into that today. We're just looking at the basics, stage one of seeing. So I start my plantain with a little touch of yellow. It's not really yellow, but I can see a bit of yellow underneath peeping through. So the color we can see underneath, we can just rub as a base color. And then I will add the more grungy colors on top, covering that color. So I'm going to go for more browns and tans. I can see some tan covering that yellow. So I like to work mostly light to dark. Some people like to work dark to light. And here we are now looking at our sweet pepper. So for the sweet pepper, it's mostly like a kind of reddish orange. So I'm just going to rub that in around my highlights lightly as I did with the egg. We already marked out where we want our extreme light and our extreme dark. Anything outside of that is going to be called our medium or mid-tone. Alright. As I'm working, I did have the sweet pepper close by. So I put in any additional areas in the mid-tones where I needed to press a little harder to make them darker. So where you see the shadow, you press a little harder on the crayon to make it look darker. Where I have the distinct shadow line, I just fill that in as hard as I can to get a darker value or tone. We will talk a little bit more about that theory in another video. But for now, we want to focus on the art of seeing. So wherever I see a shadowy area, I press a little harder it's not gonna be like perfect um, if you know me well you know that <laughs> I can get quite serious about drawing and painting and use a lot of detail but as a teacher we want to focus on what gives children a lot of challenges and that is the ability to see the light so I'm trying to make it as easy as possible for you to see how the color changes and how the light acts on your item and you can see the, the sweet pepper is coming up from the page a bit already. That little bit of coloring, and this is only one crayon, is making a huge difference. I'm starting to blend the area where the dark meets the light because it's not super distinct. You can blend a little medium pressure over where the dark meets the light and that will give you a smoother finish. Then I'm going to use like a deep reddish orange to push my shadows back just a little bit where I know it's the darkest. Mm -hmm. 
and you can see what that is doing to your drawing. It's not a perfect drawing, but again, I want you to remember that this exercise is not about perfection. It's about what you can see most distinctly. So once you've proven your sight, we'll get into more complex drawings later. All right. So we're going to color this medium color in the shadows, this darker color, sorry, everywhere where we know there's a shadow. Usually shadows occur where things dip in indents and this little um, top piece was an indent and then at the bottom where it's touching the surface so I'm just using an orange color to make my midtones a little stronger a little softer orange than what I started with and you would know that it's getting gradually lighter towards the light so you want to smooth it so it's getting gradually lighter and you can see the sweet pepper is popping up a bit from the page already I'm going to do my green bit here now. If at any point you didn't have a sweet pepper of your own and you want to go back to the clip, you can do that so that you can see a bit more things. So I can see my green around the light is a bit lighter. With this example, I had forgotten to put the outline in first because I wanted to give you a more close up view. So I'm just going to put that black outline back in now so you can see the distinct separation between the shading and the varying um, tones between a lighter orange and a darker more reddish orange for the shadows and my highlights distinguished so you can see some of the odd shapes for the highlights etc. All right, so this is a pretty cool exercise. So you have an abstract, semi-realistic kind of, semi-realistic more so kind of sweet pepper. And you would see the one that I drew previously that was kind of cut off in the last clip. So I just wanted to give you a close up so that you're not missing anything. Just peeping back for my lines <laughs> and some of my shading where I had it. And while you use crayon, the crayon can still be erasable. If you make any mistakes, if you didn't press too hard, you can still get up some of the crayon. Alright, so those are some highlights I wanted back in based on my previous drawing. And then we are going to go to our coloring back in that plantain. And once I have those rough spots on my plantain, I'm just going to finish my little learning page with some curved and geometric lines. Those triangular lines are geometric and these curved lines are more organic, you know? So anything with a point or a straight edge is more a geometric shape and organic shapes tend to be found with more natural objects and have more curves and waves to them, all right? So I'm just finishing out with that little decal. You can see um, Shanika is blending her darker brown over her banana and aging it. Sorry, her plant in. I keep mixing that up. <laughs> and I think that we did a really, really fabulous job today. And I can't wait to see pictures of your work. I used a little bit of um, black crayon to touch up my drawing. If you didn't have um, what you would call... A marker you could have easily doubled it with a black crayon just to get those distinguished marks and we're gonna make everything a bit more subtle um, in our next drawing okay but I just want you guys to pay attention to the separations of the light from brightest to medium to dark tones these are the values of light and then we're gonna look at blending a little bit more distinctly in another video so we're looking features of the light and shading 
the separations of color and the sh basic shaping that you would see in a drawing okay so if you want to add anything to your drawing at this point you can do so um, any little things that you might have seen I didn't really go over the box too much but you can add some color to that as well I added a little green to the corner and I think that you guys did a really great job I'm really excited with the finish and I'm just going to show you a close-up of what I have I only add a little bit of green to my rectangle and I didn't focus too much on that with the shading that was mostly about the shape because it didn't have too much shading going on um, and then you can see how some of the kids did ah <laughs> this is so cute mm -hmm. still working very hard on her sweet pepper and then Giovanni his shaping is quite quite nice but he does work quite slow and that's okay because as you can see he's getting better results with being more patient and he's seeing more things you'll notice his shapes have a little bit more um, warps and bends in them so he's seeing in detail but it's okay to only see simple shapes at this age and stage all right over time you will get better and thank you so much as always for participating and I look forward to seeing your work coming in. You can add fruits and vegetables that were not included in this video once you understand the art of seeing. Or you can add a different color sweet pepper based on what's in your fridge. Just show me those separations of color. Right? That is very important. Alright. I'm so proud of you guys. I think that this is a very nice exercise and you can go back to any of the pause areas to see your fruit or vegetables more clearly. See my planting got quite old <laughs> with a little brown and tan on top of the yellow and those black spots. So you want to practice seeing the separation in these things. Shanika colored in her whole sweet pepper very heavy. And you can see that most kids are only seeing between dark and light, not much medium. And that is quite fine. So I'll see you guys next time. As always, thank you so much for drawing with us. And you can send your photos to me via email or WhatsApp. And I'm looking forward to our next video.